And can you see here, we have over 420 megs of free memory on our 4K Fire Stick. How? Well, I've actually gone ahead and frozen all of these background processes. Now, freezing applications is completely different to just stopping a background process because when you stop something, there's nothing stopping it from starting up again. So maybe if you reboot your device or something else happens on your device, that background process can just start up again. But when you freeze a process, that means that process can never start again, which in turn means that process can never take up any more memory on your device ever again. Now, typically to freeze any kind of system processes, you have to have root access on your device. As you'll see in this video, I've actually frozen 16 of these background processes without any kind of routing whatsoever. And the real cherry on the cake is I did all of it with the standard remote control. And the reason why I say that is I did do a similar video to this about a year ago, but in that video, you could only freeze 10 processes and it also required you to type in multiple long commands. But in this video, we're going to do everything with the standard remote control and it's going to be a copy and paste of one command. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Okay, so just as my device is booting up, let me just take this quick opportunity to say that I hope everybody is uh, safe and I hope everybody is uh, staying indoors. Now for this process to work, we're going to install just two things. First, we're going to install Icebox, and this is the actual application that allows you to freeze applications, but more importantly, freeze system processes. The other thing we're going to install is an application called the Shizuku Manager. Now, um, pretty cool name, huh? So what this application does, it allows you to uh, grant temporary admin access to authorized applications. So for Icebox to work properly, it does need to have root access, and which of course we don't have on the 4K Fire Stick, um, or at least not on my device. But what the Shizuka Manager will allow us to do is to give Icebox that temporary access so we can freeze those system applications. So, so they're the two main things that we need to install. We then configure them and we choose whichever processes or background applications that we want to freeze. So as per normal, make sure you've got developer options enabled and head over to Downloader. And as always, let's navigate to my website, which is http colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly forward slash tduk. That's me and the numbers 2019. Let's type that in and click on go or press the play button on your remote. Let's do that now and this will take you directly to my website. Now, as per normal, I do write up all of my tutorials because I know some people prefer to read um, as well as just, you know, watching the videos. So if you go over to the tutorial section by clicking on the hamburger menu, and the first tutorial you'll see in the list will be on how you can freeze applications on the 4K Fire Stick. Oh, and actually, if you guys haven't seen this list yet, let me just open that first. So I did actually compile this a few days ago with the help from one of my viewers, so many thanks for that. And we can see guys, there's literally just so much great content in here and all of them are clickable links. So if I wanna see this, I can click on that and that'll take me straight to it and so on and so forth. So if you guys haven't seen that list, then do also check that out. But for this video, find the tutorial that says freeze system applications on the 4K Fire Stick. And let's open that up and let's scroll down. And here we can see we get the exact list of the software that we need for this process. So I already have all three things installed on my device, but let's say you want to get an icebox. Let's click on that. Then let's scroll down and click on the green download button. And I'll download the application directly onto your device. And once that's downloaded, we can click on install and that will then install the application directly onto your device. So follow the same process for those three applications. Once they're all installed, let's press the home key now the first application we want to open is the actual Shizuku manager. So let's do that now. So when you start this application for the first time, this is what you'll see. And it's basically just letting you know that you need to run a single ADB command and that command will then give this application the correct permissions that it needs. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this video, we don't actually need to do any typing ourselves. We can utilize copy and paste with the standard remote control. So let's do that now. Let me bring up my virtual mouse. And of course, guys, if you don't have the virtual mouse, then that is available on my downloads page. And let's click on view ADB command. 
and that's the command there which will allow us to start this application with the correct permissions. So let's click on copy. So we've now copied that command. Okay, so that's now copied. Let's press the home key. Let's now go over to our remote ADB shell. And because we're making a connection to ourselves, we can leave the IP address as 127.0.0.1 and the port number is always 5555. Let's click on connect. And we've now made a connection. So when you see the Mantis prompt, that means you've now made a successful ADB connection to your device. Now the copy and paste thing, I don't know why it just took me so long to get it right because I just kept on trying different things to get it working, but nothing would work. So fortunately for you guys, I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. So the way we paste commands using the standard remote control is the first thing you need to do is actually bring up the virtual mouse again. So once again, double press the play button. There it is, we can see there's the cursor there. So using the virtual mouse, if you scroll down and you click on this line here, that will then bring up the virtual keyboard. But again, how do you actually paste now? Well, the way you paste is you go to the top here and when the circle turns into a cursor, you can now press and hold the select button and we see we then get the paste prompt. So that honestly just took a lot longer than it needed, but we got there in the end. Okay, so let's now click on paste. Now, a key thing here is if you notice the command um, that I've pasted in starts with ADB shell, but because we're already inside ADB shell, we need to basically take that out. So how do we now edit this line and remove ADB shell from the start of the command? Well, again, using the virtual mouse, if you go down here where the pointer changes into a cursor, and if you go to the beginning of the line, and if you click about here, we can see that then moves the cursor back a bit. Let's click there again. And we can see now slowly, slowly, that cursor is going back. If you look at the command in the background, you can see that cursor as I'm clicking is moving slowly, slowly backwards. So, and if I keep on clicking, we can see that cursor moves back. So keep on clicking here until you get to the start of the command that we want, which is just SH. So keep clicking. Okay, so there it is. That's another cursor is at the start of SH. I can now disable my virtual mouse by pressing the play button once. And now when I press down, we can see I can use the normal directional pad. Now I can click on delete. And that then, as we can see on the screen, is deleting ADB shell. So it was very frustrating, guys, trying to work this out, but we got there in the end. All right, so now we can see the command is just SH and then the rest of that line, which is fine. I can now click on run. Let's do that. And as soon as I click on run, I'm gonna press the back button just so we can see exactly what's happening in the background. So let's click on run and press back on the remote. And there we can just see it's now starting the Shizuku server. And as soon as it finishes starting, it takes us back into the application just to let us know that it's now ready to use. Okay, let's now bring up the virtual mouse again but we now need to authorize an application to use this. So let's click on this. And as we've installed Icebox already, we can see it's now in the list. If I just move my face out of the way, we can see it's currently not enabled. So if I just click on that now, and that then enables it, which means Icebox can now use the Shizuka manager to give it the correct permissions. Okay, let's back out of this now. Okay, let me now press the home key. So Shizuka manager is now ready. We now need to open up Icebox for the first time. Let's do that now. And it's now asking you, how is Icebox going to get the right permissions that it needs? So let's open up the virtual mouse and we don't have root. Uh, we're not gonna be using device owner. Let's scroll down and we can see inside more, there is an option for the Shizuka manager. So let's click on that. It says you need to authorize this, which we've already done. That's fine. And let's click on okay. And there it is, guys. We've now given this application full admin access to our device, and we can now start freezing applications that would have totally not been allowed before. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, using the virtual mouse, if we now click on apps, and here's all the applications installed on my device. Now this time, let's go to system. And a real sincere word of warning here, guys. As the message on the screen says, if you do freeze, um, let's say the wrong applications, you could potentially break a device. So, so please do not free something unless you really know what you're doing. And the stuff that I'm gonna be showing you today is the stuff that I've tested personally myself. Okay, let's click on got it, which means we understand the risk. Now, when I first saw this, I thought, okay, so we've got about 15 things here. So I can see things like, you know, Amazon Photos, Alexa Shopping, uh, free time. But as the message says on the top right, we can actually see the hidden application. So if I click on this and select include hidden, 
and this will now open up as we can see a lot more applications so these things are all running on your device whether you like it or not and whether you use them or not just the way amazon is this is what's all running in the background so what can you disable so so far i found 16 things that we can freeze without causing any issue to your device but at the same time that will give you so much more free memory but of course guys as we can see if i just scroll down there's just so many things all running in the background here. I mean, you can just see this one over here is the Kindle Auto Time Service. So why have I got that on my Fire Stick? I don't know. And that is one of the things that we'll be disabling. But if I just scroll down, all these things are running in the background, guys. All these things consuming valuable, valuable system resources. And as mentioned, I found 16 things so far, but as we can see, there's just so many other things we could potentially disable, which I will be testing. And if you guys want to see an update to that, do think about subscribing because that really is the best way to help out my channel. Thank you. All right, so let's start, guys. So I don't know why. Should we start at the bottom? No, let's start at the top. So let's go to the top. So the very first thing we're going to disable is Alexa Shopping. So let's click on that. Then let's scroll down. And the next one is Amazon Free Time. Now, somebody did actually ask me about this and they're wondering how could they actually turn this off? Well, once we freeze this application or this process, trust me when I say it's not gonna be allowed to run anymore. Now, next up, we've got the Amazon Metrics service. So again, why is this running? Let me click on that and just select Add to List. We've got three things so far. Let's scroll down and let's now add in Amazon Music. Uh, let's also add in Amazon Photos and let's scroll down even more. Now, Amazon Jackson, let's click on that. Let's click on add to list. And the next one we're going to look at is the auto time service. And here is the auto time zone service. Let's click on that and select add to list. And you've got the Buella device service. Let's click on that, add to list. Let's keep going down. Here it is. So you've got the content management service for Kindle. Let's click on that, add to list. Okay, let me now press the back button on the remote. One more time. Okay, so it's actually 17, so my mistake is actually 17 background processes that I've successfully disabled without any real issue on my device. Okay, so they're now added into the icebox. Let's now freeze them. How do we freeze them? Well, we bring up the virtual mouse and let's click on this big icon over here. Let's click on that. And that now freezes all of those background applications, all of those background processes, so they just cannot start and they just cannot run on your system which in turn then frees up so much of your valuable resources, i.e. your free memory. And if we just go back into the icebox, we can see they're all in there and they're all frozen. So two things left. What happens when I reboot? And let's say if I want to start a frozen application. Well, let's do the second one first. So if I want to start Amazon Music, for example, I can just go into my icebox like so, click on Amazon Music, and I'll then instantly thaw or you know defrost the application and launch it for me so that's how you can access or that's how you can launch applications which have been frozen okay let's back out of that and we can see it's currently not frozen because it doesn't have that small uh, frost symbol next to it and if i want to freeze it again i can just click on that press and hold and select the option to freeze let's open that up again and just to confirm that everything in the icebox is frozen once again so that's how you do that the other thing is what happens when you reboot. So you have to understand that the Shizuka manager only gives temporary admin access. So of course, if you reboot the device, the access is gone. Now that doesn't mean that your applications will be unfrozen. It just means that you cannot manage those applications. So if I want to unfreeze something, I can't do it. If I want to add something extra into the icebox, I can't do it until I then type in that command once again. So let's do that right now. Let me reboot my device. And a quick way to reboot is just press the play and the select buttons together for five seconds. Let me do that now. So five, four, three, two, there we go. There goes my phone. And just while we're waiting, guys, if you are enjoying this kind of video, if you want to see more tutorials for the 4K Fire Stick or the second generation Fire TV Cube or the brand new Nvidia Shield Pro or even your generic Android boxes, then please do like this video and also think about subscribing because that really is the best way to help out my channel. Thank you. Okay, so after the reboot, when you start Icebox, you'll see you get this message telling you that because the Shizuku service is not running, Although these applications are frozen, we can't actually manage them or change them or unfreeze them. So how do we do that? Well, once again, let's go back to the Shizuku Manager. Let's start that up. And this is only just so we can get the command that we need to copy and paste into Remote ADB. So let's now get the command again. 
click on copy. And again, guys, this is only if you want to make changes to your icebox. If you're happy with your frozen applications, you don't want to unfreeze them or you don't want to add in any extra applications to freeze, then you can leave this as is and those applications will permanently be frozen. But because we want to change something, let's now run this command again, which has to start sh and then the rest of the command. Let's click on run. Let's press the back button. And we can see that the Shizuku server has now started correctly, which means when I press the home key now, go back into Icebox. We now get no error messages and we can now tweak any of the applications in here or we can add in another application to freeze and so on and so forth. So let's say for example, I find that the screensaver is something that I do actually like. I can press and hold this and select the option remove from list. That's now been removed. So that's all for this video guys. I hope you found it useful. Uh, sorry it was a bit long, but I just want to make sure that you guys fully understand the process how it works but really guys the ability to freeze system applications without any kind of root i do think that's pretty impressive so once again if you guys did like it hit that thumbs up if you want to see more stuff like this you know what to do as always i always appreciate your likes your shares your comments so do let me know what you think leave me a comment below and i'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon thanks